Hey everybody, and welcome back to FSI DFS. I am McKinley412, and we're going to be looking at this five-game main slate on Friday, the second game of the se- second slate of the season. Uh, hopefully, opening day treated you guys well. Hopefully, you had a lot of Baltimore. Uh, we had plenty of Baltimore, which was certainly helpful. But you guys know we were also very high on um, Minnesota. Uh, that was kind of disappointing. Uh, they had 21 men left on base throughout the game, which is just unreal. Uh, three of their nine innings, they left the bases loaded. Uh, it hurt. But clearly we were on the right path. Uh, just with getting that many guys on the base path, they just couldn't knock them home. But hopefully the luck will be in our favor for day two here. Again, pitching. A lot of solid talent, uh, not as much as yesterday, obviously, uh, but still a bunch of guys that are priced down and, you know, a misprice or two misprices, uh, in my opinion, um, just kind of like straight off the bat. So what we'll do is we'll go through each of the pitchers, uh, talk to them about them a little bit. We have the uh, sheet here as well with kind of how we ranked them out. Uh, normally it's, you know, high, medium, low salary, but we just went above 8K, below 8K uh, for this one. So starting at the top, um, I, I think the above 8K and probably the best play on the slate is going to be uh, Christian Javier for Houston. It's 8.2K for a guy who had a 33% strikeout rate last season is just not right. Um, if you remember, we were paying five figures for this guy uh, late into last season. It's kind of like dribbled down uh, as the season progressed for some reason. But still, like this is a guy that has 10K upside, 10,000 salary upside. Monster ceiling with his strikeout rate going up against the White Sox, who can strike out quite a bit. Uh, we know that from last season. So I think Javier is probably going to be your best overall pitcher of the slate. He's probably going to be the cover photo um, for this video as well. So Javier leading off the slate here. Right after him, Robbie Ray. Uh, Ray had a 27% K rate, so like nothing to scoff at. Like that is almost elite level. Uh, and he had a fantastic spring. Uh, He went 15 innings pitched, 25 strikeouts in those 15 innings, so allowing only two earned runs. Only issue with him is that, you know, he didn't go super deep into the game, so he won't be going, like, as far as a guy like Javier. Like, Javier went over 80 pitches in one of his starts, so um, he's fully, you know stretched out uh see so will so Robbie Ray might not be as stretched out but still I mean with how this guy has been performing in that matchup against Cleveland and Cleveland's not going to be a team that's going to be like launching the ball um with a whole lot of home runs this season they're gonna be playing the small ball game they're gonna be hitting singles and stealing bases like that's just how their lineup is built um and Robbie Ray you know he's been susceptible to the home run in the past so maybe like this could be a better matchup for him uh going up against Cleveland so 9.2k I don't mind that at all like there's really not much of a salary crunch in here i'll bury the lead like san diego is the team that we're going to be targeting against freeland um and dk made them super super cheap it's kind of like the braves 2.0 um for this uh slate here so javier number one uh robbie ray number two right after that we got may and lynn there's nothing like great about these guys, but there's nothing like saying like, oh, this is terrible. Don't play them at all. Uh, they both had solid spring trainings. You know, I'm not going to go through every single uh, number of theirs in the spring training, but like Lynn had one bad start of his like four or five starts. And that was it. Uh, May, he pitched almost six innings in his final spring training start. So like they're they're stretched out. They're, they're going to be fine. Lynn is a workhorse. We know that he can go super deep into games anyways. But like when you're looking at the 8K and a Above guys like why pay for Dustin May when you can just get Javier for $200 cheaper GPP yes absolutely uh, but in terms of like optimal builds you just put Javier uh, in that price range and then kind of same with Lance Lynn why go Lance Lynn when you could just go up a little bit more get Robbie Ray who is also in a better matchup going up against Cleveland where Lynn has to face Houston never exciting going up against Houston so looking into the bottom half of those guys uh, I know I skipped over Kelly. I don't care about Kelly. I'm not going to be playing him. Uh, Freeland's also going to be a fade here. But below 8K, guys, Peterson. This is the other misprice uh, that DK had. 6.6K for a guy who had a 28% strikeout rate last season. Make it make sense. Again, this is the guy that, ignore those, you know, five-figure ones. Those when he was like, I don't understand what happened there. But when he was a starter, 
Like he was in the 8K range, close to 9K range uh, when he was a starter for the Mets. How does he go under the radar as an almost 28% strikeout rate uh, pitcher? Well, he pitched behind DeGrom and Scherzer. So he wasn't really garnering too much attention. But 6.6K is just way, way, way too cheap. So if you do want a little bit more of those top bats from San Diego, even some guys from Houston or uh, Seattle, Peterson is definitely a guy that can get you there uh, in terms of that. Right after him, we uh, ranked Luzardo behind him going up against the Mets. Luzardo had a 30% K rate on the nose. 30% K rate, it's that elite number that we're looking for in pitchers. Uh, so Luzardo is fine with that. One quick thing, going back to Peterson, and he's a little bit risky in this regard. He's been having some control issues all throughout spring. Um, he was almost at like a walk per inning rate. Uh, through his four starts in spring training. So there is that little concern, uh, but still, a 6.6K is just far too cheap for his strikeout rate. Uh, Scherzer and the Mets bullpen struck out Miami 12 times on opening day, so, you know, susceptible to strikeouts. I, I think he he's okay. But Luzardo, if you want a guy who doesn't walk guys, who has just as high of a K rate, if not a little bit more, uh, but in a much tougher matchup, Luzardo could be a guy uh, that you want to go there. Nick Martinez, uh, we saw him kind of really improve throughout the course of last season. He only had a 22% strikeout rate on the season overall, but in that second half, it was almost up to 25%. And then he went out, had a great uh, spring training, so uh, I'm, I'm not too concerned with him. I mean, I have no reason to fade him. I think he's uh, in a great spot. He's going to be in great line for a win going up against Colorado. Um, and, you know, he'll, he'll be a fine play. Don't care about Freeland. Gaddis, ne don't pay attention to the fantasy points per game here. I know a lot of people will and say that Seattle's like the best stack of the day. Gaddis, he's not that bad of a pitcher. He had two rough starts, but, you know, in the minor leagues, uh, he had, like, a 3.5 ERA. Like, he's no, like, gas can or any, by any means. Um, and he kind of proved that uh, during spring training as well. Uh, he went 11 innings in spring training, 13 strikeouts in those 11 innings, and only allowed four earned runs. Uh, had great control. He limited the walks. So, like, yeah, that was fine. So if I'm not going to say fade him because look at this price tag, 5K, love that price tag. Um, in that, like, it's not going to burn you if it does poorly. But still, I will take Peterson over Gaddis. I will still take Luzardo over Gaddis and Martinez over Gaddis um, in that below 8K range. So that's kind of where everything is at with pitchers. So let's turn our attention to the bats. San Diego already talked about it. They are going to be the uh, team that is the chalk and they're just far too cheap going up against freeland freeland actually posted reverse splits last season so he's a left-handed pitcher but it meant that left-handed batters actually hit him best so the two left-handed batters that are on san diego are jake cronenworth can i highlight second base there we go it's going to be cronenworth and it's going to be soto both of these guys on top of being lefties um just had phenomenal phenomenal straight springs World Baseball Classics, what uh, say it? I got the numbers here. Cronenworth hit 396 uh, and not with nine extra base hits and 48 at bats. Soto in the spring training plus World Baseball Classic combined, he just hit an average of a uh, 482 in 30 at bats. Oh, it's whatever. It's whatever. Uh, so yeah, so these guys are mashing the ball. You know, they both can get stolen bases as well. And stolen bases in DFS this year is going to be a lot more important, uh, just because there's going to be so many more uh, teams are attempting them a lot more with the bigger base paths and with the pitching uh, rules where you can only step off twice. If they step off twice, you got a pretty good chance that uh, the base runner is going to be taking a break for it. Happened to Acuna today in the first inning for Atlanta definitely possible for it to keep moving forward. So Cronenworth and Soto, absolutely. Those are like the first two guys that I would put in for San Diego, but then they have Bogarts and they still have Machado. And I think like you can jam both those guys in um, all the star power. Obviously I would start with Cronenworth and Soto, but I, I'm not at all going to argue if you throw in Machado and Bogarts. So you can kind of see with like a big San Diego stack and Javier and Ray, Pricing does get a little tight. We're at 3.2K remaining. Uh, one value play that I like immediately stood out to me uh, was on Seattle, who I think is probably like the second favorite team uh, for me because of this value guy. Uh, but it's Kalenich, 2.7K. I know he had a, a 
abysmal year last year. But this is one. This was one of like the top hitting prospects in baseball. Um, drafted very high in the draft. 2.7K, abysmal uh, year last year, but spring training, he was lighting it up. 16 for 43, six extra base hits for a 372 batting average. He was batting over 400 through the majority of spring before, you know, the last couple of games, he kind of fell off a little bit. But he bats a little farther down in the order, or at least he's projected to, so I kind of hope he's more up in the order, but still, on a small slate like this, I think on a great offensive team, I think 2.7K is just far too cheap for him, uh, given the opportunity that he's going to have. And, you know, he kind of opens up a little bit of salary for you. But again, you can kind of see salary is kind of tight. We still got to jam a first baseman in there. Um, it's going to be a little difficult. But if you, like, take Robbie Ray out, you throw in, you know, Peterson, go a little bit more risky, guy with a similar K up, uh, K rate, but a little bit more risky with the walks, really opens up things at 4.3k because like if you look at catcher nobody's expensive at catcher aside from will smith everybody else you're already you're not going to take grandal against javier so you're already down to 3.5k and below drops off fast nola for san diego 2.7k he's probably going to be popular just because he's so cheap and because he is on san diego other teams I like, uh, Dodgers obviously going up against Kelly. I just don't have much interest in Kelly. Kelly is an even splits pitcher, so you can take uh, batters from left side, right side, doesn't matter. Um, he allows even splits on both sides. GPP, I think Houston might be my favorite GPP play. Uh, it's mainly because they have very similar pricing to San Diego, but also going up against Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn had the worst year of his career in allowing home runs last year his home run per nine last year was 1.41 the league average is just 1.1 shade under so like 0.3 doesn't sound like a lot but that's actually a huge huge gap so maybe houston can hit some home runs off of lynn here uh, guys like alvarez guys like tucker like they have so many bats in their lineup that even if in like a one-off they can hit a home runs like they have so many bats that can uh hit the ball out of the park so you know we're looking for like the warmer temperatures especially earlier in spring when a lot of these places are cold um we don't really get that on this slate just because miami houston san diego this is going to be a dome uh and then la like it's going to be warm throughout but still houston i'm not worried about the the cold temperatures or anything they're, they're gonna be able to hit the home run out so i do like them as a gpp play here uh followed by the mets and then miami you can honestly put the miami above the mets just because i talked about peterson and his walk issues uh having a little bit of control struggle uh but yeah so do what you will with that arizona colorado they're cheap i don't have much interest in them but they are cheap and then leverage spots it's going to be the white Sox going up against, up against javier and then cleveland going up against ray the issue with Cleveland is, I kind of mentioned earlier, they play a lot of small ball. Like, they're they're not going to be a team that's just going to be hitting home run after home run like like Houston uh, or some other some of these other teams. But they're definitely going to be a team. Get a single, get on the Bates pass, and we're just going to run and dink and dunk and just kind of get you that way. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't think salary is going to be much of an issue at all. On this slate, again, pitchers are really priced down. There's two missed prices with Javier and with uh, Peterson. And then San Diego themselves going up against Freeland. Um, just, they're too cheap. They're too cheap. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much how this slate goes. Uh, and, yeah, just trying to think if I missed anything. I don't think I did. So, as always, thank you for watching these videos. We really do appreciate all the support. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, what do you like about these videos? What are some improvements that maybe you want to see? Um, so yeah, so we really take all that to heart. We read all the comments and we really do appreciate all of the views. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, good luck in your contests and have a great day.